let's make his name great. He is a mighty God. He is the God who saved us and raised us. He healed us. He delivered us. He brought us down the, the different parts of the highway, brought us all the way down Dixie, all the way to 2208. And what are we going to do? We're going to magnify him and bless him. Come on, bless him with me. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. God, we give you praise. We bless you in this place on today. Glory to God. Come on, saints. Come on, let's fill this place with adoration. Come on, yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, saints. Let's do it. Fill it with adoration. We enter into this gate with thanksgiving. Come on, fill the house with the adoration of your God. Glory to God. He is our Savior, our blesser, our keeper. Uh, we praise and bless his name. We worship Christ, our Lord. We worship Christ, our Lord. We lift our hands to thee today.
adore you. Adore you. We declare, we declare nobody like you. Nobody like you. We worship, we worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare, we declare nobody like you. Nobody like you. Hey, we worship, we worship. We adore you. Adore you. We declare, we declare nobody like you. Nobody like you. Say we worship, we worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare, we declare nobody like you. Say we worship, we worship, we adore you, adore you. We declare, nobody like you, nobody like you. Say we worship, we worship, adore you, adore you. And we declare, nobody like you, nobody like you. We worship, we worship, we adore you, adore you. We declare, nobody like you, 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 nobody like you.
to give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, you're down. There's nobody like him. Come on, there's nobody like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we just stand as wide as the sky. God, we will lift your name high. As wide as the sky. It's pretty wide, y'all. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up, hearts open, wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Hands up. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up, hands up, hearts open, wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Come on, one more time, DJ. Hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Lift Come on. High. Hands up, hands up. Hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. My favorite part. Let all the other names fade away. All the other names fade away until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Come on, y'all, help me right there. Let all, let all the other names fade away. Yeah, let all, let all the other names fade away. Until there's only you. Until there's only you. Let all.
the heart fix it. If the heart's ever been broken, he can fix it again. Hey! Hallelujah! Come on, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Glory to God. 
I said, you're standing here. Mother Tony, because he made a way. It wasn't the alarm clock, but it was God who made you aware of your surroundings. I said, he made a way. You ought to lift your hand and praise God because he made a way. Thank you, Jesus. Dr. Paul, he made a way. Sister Gis, he made a way. Brother Nicholas, he made. Only God could do it. I said only God could do it. Oh, my, my, my. I said only God. Hey, hey, hey. You hear me, Sister Walls? Only God can do it. Oh, my God. I said, uh, 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 my God, only God can do it. My back was against the wall, and I thought it was over. But God, come on, praise Him. Come on and bless Him. Come on and glorify him. Come on, come on. Hey, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, yeah. I got my God. Somebody can testify that I thought it was over. I thought it was over. I thought it was my last time. I was down for the count. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is my privilege today to introduce the speaker. But come on, if y'all feel a praise, I feel one too. Come on, I feel one. Oh, my, 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 my. I feel one too. I said, I feel one too. I feel a praise. I feel a praise in the temple. Can anybody just give me 30 seconds? Give him honor and give him praise. 
Every now and then we just have to praise God, Mother Holt, for God just making a way. Sometimes we got to drag ourselves out the bed, but if you can make it to the house of God, God provides for you everything that you need. We thank God for his strength. Come on, have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Oh, my God. I thank him for making a way. I thank him for making a way. I thank him. Sister Evans. I, oh, my, 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 my. I thank God for making a way. He made a way. Woo. I know I have to put up the speaker, but I just remember, y'all, real quick. I just remember last year around this time. My mom and my dad both had COVID. My dad is in his 80s and my mom just turned 80. And, and, and when you contract COVID in, these, in those times, there, there was not a, a, a good prognosis. But I thank God I saw my mother go through so many things having COVID. And it was frightening some days, Sister Walls, seeing the things that my mother went through going through uh, trying to work this virus out of her. But I thank God, even though it could have been another way, millions didn't make it. Y'all don't know we lost a million people to COVID, but I can say that my mama was one of the ones. She was one of the ones he did. Oh, he made a way. <laughs> when the virus didn't work. When the virus didn't work, when the injections didn't work, can I tell somebody that my mama is here? And July 15th, she's about, she celebrated 80 years. And she told me, please. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. And if you don't have a reason to praise him, I can give you at least 10. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But listen, we've come up to the time of the word of God. Amen. Amen. And we have a speaker on today who has come to the, the temple, miracle temple of God for such a time as this. Her name is Tisha Holt. And we thank God that she is a part of our ministry. We want you to prepare yourselves. Did y'all hear me? We want you all to prepare yourselves for what the Lord has to say for us. We don't want you to sit there and spectate. But we want you all to get with the word on today. And it's my pleasure to introduce to some of you and present to others our very own Tisha Holt. God receive her in her own way. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Did anybody come to lift up the name of Jesus? Did anybody come to lift up the name of Jesus? She said he made a way. I don't know about you, but when I look back over my life and I see how far God has brought me, I come to let you know that he made a way. I thank him for his keeping power. Oh, hallelujah. Come on and give him another praise. Oh, come on and praise him. Oh, hallelujah. We serve a great and mighty God. I was going to sing a song, but the atmosphere is set. Oh, we thank God for his presence being in the house. First, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, and to my bishop, Bishop Gabriel J. Hatcher Sr., I thank God for you. And to our fragrance of this house, the evangelist Karen Hatcher, we thank God for you. And to the elders and ministers and mothers and missionaries, and to all of you in your respective places, we thank God for you. And I have to honor my own mother. I thank God for Mother Tony Holt. And to my family being here and my friends, I appreciate your support. But I come to let you know that there is a word from the Lord. Uh, there is a word from the Lord. So I hope that you came hungry. And I hope you came ready to eat the word of the Lord on today. Um, if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through 2. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through 2. I'm going to read two translations. One is the King James Version, the other is the Message Bible. And if you have your Bibles, please stand for the Word of God. 
And when you have it, say amen. The King James Version says, I beseech you, therefore, brothering, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, the Message Bible, it reads like this. It says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday and ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. But instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you. And listen to this, it says, and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you and develops well-formed maturity in you. And so my topic for this afternoon is how will you respond? And for a subtopic, I want to let you know that it is transition time. Uh, so go ahead and get you a neighbor. You're going to have a neighbor throughout my message. Uh, but ask your neighbor, how will you respond? And tell your neighbor that it is transition time. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oftentimes when we are in a season of transition and change in our lives, we really don't take the time to really think about how we should respond. Our first expression is normally emotional. But how we respond in this season of our lives is important because we are headed to our better. That's good news right there, that we are headed to our better. And so God reminded me of my own testimony. Um, I haven't always done things right, Miracle Temple, uh, but the process that I went through, I can tell you it was the mercy of God that kept me. And what I found out while going through my process, if you won't change, it's all in how you respond. And God said, you're in your process, but how will you respond? And so before we can respond, people of God, there's something that we must do. And what we must do is we must examine our souls. And so I asked a lot of questions. I'm going to ask you some questions about your soul. Um, how is your soul? Um, is your soul healthy? Uh, is your soul uh, worn out? Uh, is your soul refreshed? Um, is your soul toxic? Um, take a moment and think about it. At some point in our lives, our soul is broken. And we have to deal with the wounds that come with it. And as we are transitioning, we need to refresh our souls from within by connecting with the Holy Spirit. And we do this by being honest with where we are spiritually. Oftentimes, we don't want to be honest about where we are. Uh, but can we be honest on today? Uh, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 4 and 16, Therefore, if we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, but yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. And as you are being renewed every day, transitioning is a process, and it requires change. I'm going to say that again, that transitioning is a process, and it requires for you to change. And so God has designed change to be a process and not an event. And as we are trying to reach the purpose that God has for us, God sometimes has to allow the process to have some detours. Um, he has to allow the process to have some disappointment that seems to be unexplainable. But all the while, God is just wanting us to transition to his will and not our own. And so sometimes we need to ask ourselves the question, do I want to be comfortable? I do. I want to be purposeful. Go ahead and take some time out to ask yourself the question, do I want to be comfortable? I do. I want to be purposeful. Um, transition sometimes will require for us to have to leave some things behind. Um, it's going to require for you to have to do some cutting off and letting go in order to get us to purpose. And so oftentimes, because we won't let go, we continue to find ourselves in the same cycles for years. Uh, the same thing happens around the same time every year, and you find yourself wondering why this keeps happening. Can I get a witness? And so how many can say they are tired of being in the same cycle? 
And how many want this cycle to be broken on today? Well, Miracle Temple, I came to help you like God has been helping me. Um, it's all in how you respond. So when we hear the word process, uh, we don't like the word process, and we often ask the questions, how long? Um, how long will this take, and how long will I have to endure? Well, my brothers and sisters, what I have found out as I have gotten a little older and experienced some things, getting to the next level does not happen quickly. Uh, but a successful transition takes time. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor that it's going to take some time. Um, the Bible says the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but it's to the one who endures to the end. Go ahead and encourage your neighbor and tell him you're going to have to endure in this season. Uh, we need to face that God will, uh, is always changing us. And knowing God's will, there's something that we must accept. We must accept the sovereignty of God. We must accept the fact that God has determined certain aspects of our lives and it may not be what we want it to be. But please know and listen to me that God is interested in getting you to purpose. But he's also interested in the growth and the maturity that a company's transitioning to. So let me help you with how God works. God will typically work diligently deliberately, strategic, strategically, and more slowly just to see how you will respond. And so know that God's timing is perfect. Um, it may not seem like it when we go through transition, but trust me, God's timing is perfect. And so God just wants to see if you will patiently cooperate with it. And know that transition is uncomfortable. Yes, it is, but it is the will of God. Um, God spoke to me and told me to tell you that don't miss God in transition because you do not respond correctly. Um, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, don't miss God in this season. Um, so I was reminded of the story about the rich young ruler in my study. Uh, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 19, verse 21 through 23, it says, If you wish to be complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. And so the rich young ruler's response was very telling. Um, it says that when he heard this statement, he went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. And so we see here that the rich young ruler missed Jesus' transition because the young man was focused on his property instead of focused on what Jesus was offering. And so I ask you today, what or who are you focused on? Uh, we are all guilty of missing God in his transition for our lives because of how we respond and the lack of being focused. But our text today in Romans 12, 1 and 2 is going to help us with what we need to do to transition, but it's all in how you will respond to it. And so I want to give some brief history in the first 11 chapters of the book of Romans. Um, it tells the story of the Lord God and the immense favor that he has done for us. God deals with our sin problem, declares us righteous in his sight, and he sets us free from slavery to our sinful nature. But in our text, God is urging the Apostle Paul to urge or exhort to us to respond to God that we may prove that it's good and pleasing to the will of God. Um, God is wanting to make us anew. Uh, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Tell your neighbor that he's making me anew. Um, our text says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now note that who is addressed are Christians. The apostle Paul addresses his words to the brethren. Those who have come to faith in Christ Jesus. And so the Apostle Paul's words are a call to action. Say a call to action. Um, they are directed toward application. And so these words challenge the Christian to make an important commitment to take action. And so God is thus very concerned that our actions stem from righteous attitudes and motives. And so in our text it says by the mercies of God. And I'm going to try to break it down line upon line. And so what is mercy? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. Um, it is God's compassion on his creation. 
And if we take a look back a few chapters to Romans 9 and 18, Paul says something about God's mercy that I found very interesting and worth telling you. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, therefore, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy and he heartens whom he wants to hearten. And so the Apostle Paul here is pointing out the fact that God's mercy is selective, further showing that it is undeserved. And so we have done nothing to merit the mercy of God. Um, he has chosen to shower his mercy on us, and for that reason, we should give God all the praise. Uh, we have some great examples of how God's mercy worked in the life of Christ. Um, Christ's compassion and mercy show through when he healed the blind man. And when he touched the lepers and made them clean. And like us, they did nothing to deserve a touch from the Lord. But his mercy made them whole. Look at your neighbor and tell him, his mercy is making me whole. Um, so I want to ask you, where would we be without God's love and forgiveness? Uh, where would we be without God's presence in our lives? Uh, just think for a moment about our current situations. Consider our family, our friends, our job, and even our church. Uh, do we truly deserve those on merit alone? As we are in transition, we should wake up every morning and tell God, thank you for new mercies. Because the Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. And for that, you should thank him. And so there are four points that the text shows us that we are going to have to respond to in this season of transition. Uh, the first thing that we will need to respond to is to the call to consecration. Um, there is an act that we must practice. The text says that ye present your bodies. This is the call of consecration. Mercy should be what prompts our consecration. That word present simply means to put at one's disposal. Uh, we often can be mistaken by the idea of it's my life. And I can do what I want to do with it. Uh, we all have said that at some point in our lives. But God's word reveals just the opposite. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 20 says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And so it is the body that enfolds our emotions, our mind, our thoughts, our desires, and our plans. And so our motive for presenting our bodies to God as a sacrifice is not to enhance ourselves. Uh, but it's to, or to even manipulate God into doing what we want him to do. But it's purely out of gratitude to him for what he and his mercy has done for you. And so because of God's love for us, we shouldn't have no problem presenting ourselves to God because the text says it is our reasonable service. Uh, the response that the word of God urges us to make is that we should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Say a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice is known with something new. For Paul, our presence is not some sacrifice that ends in death, but instead is a consecration, our dedication to the will and the work of God that is life-giving. And so we are called to give ourselves completely to God. God is looking for us to die to self and live for him in every decision that we make. And so over in Romans 6, verses 12 through 14, we will see similar language to our text where it talks about presenting our bodies. It says, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that, you're, that you obey its lust and do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness. But present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. And so we often just think of the sentence that says to present the members of our bodies as instruments of righteousness. So our sacrifice to God, it can't be partial. But what God is saying to us is, I want control of all of you. He said, I want to use you as instruments to accomplish my purpose. He said, God is saying, I want your eyes to engross my word. I want your mouth to speak my praise. I want your hands to help others in need. And I want your brain to lay plans that glorify me. And so God wants us to yield to him and surrender our bodies and live a consecrated life before him. And so I'm going to ask you a question, but if you're not ready to answer it, it's fine. But is anybody ready to yield your life to God on today? Um, if we are going to respond to the call to consecration, we also have to respond to the call to the change of character. 
You have to change your character. Our minds and our attitude make up our godly character. Um, there is an attitude and character that we must possess. We have to give up what is not like Christ. And so some of us have some rooted characteristics that we do have, such as selfish pride, pettiness, lust, bitterness, envy, jealousy, resentment, rejection, anger, deceit. I could keep going, but you know what you had. But the world system says, do you. We say, I'm doing me. But God says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. First Peter 5 and 6. And so the scriptures are very clear about the fact that the Christian is not to be a self-seeking person, but a submissive person. And so submissiveness is precisely what the Apostle Paul is addressing in our text. Uh, these are things that we must deal with before we can get to better. Uh, we have to do a self-check sometimes and be honest with ourselves and say, I struggle with these things. And we have to ask God to deliver me. Um, go ahead, if you want true deliverance, go ahead and ask God to deliver you. Um, in our response to this change, we cannot come to God any kind of way. Uh, but the response of our character should be living, holy, acceptable, or in other words, pleasing. And so the first characteristic is living. Um, it, it's our living that is the act of worship. Now understand that death is involved. Uh, we can only live for God as a living sacrifice because he has first died and been raised to new life in Christ Jesus. Galatians 2 and 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. And what Paul is speaking of here is a lifestyle. Say a lifestyle. Worship here is seen as a lifestyle. So God is looking for some true worshipers. Do I have some true worshipers in the house? John 4, 23 and 24 says, But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And so worship God wants is for us to live our daily lives in obedience to his word. We have to live in obedience. You see, we come to the building Sunday after Sunday, but it is beyond this building. Our worship is who we are. And so when we are on our jobs and in the schools and on the campus, we should be God's people in those places. Living as he wants us to live and behaving as he wants us to behave. Speaking as he wants us to speak and using our bodies to do his will and accomplish his purpose. That's a spiritual act of worship. The next characteristic is holy. God is looking for a holy people. A holy person has a quality about their life that is unique. Um, their present lifestyle is not only changed from past lifestyles, but is set apart from the lifestyle of the unbeliever around them. And so we are to live a holy life and be different. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16 says, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. I'm going to read that again. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. See, we have been commanded to live a holy life. And see, we have options to do a lot of things. But when I read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, it seems to me, Bishop, that holiness is not an option, but it's mandatory. And so I'm going to ask you, what is your response going to be to that? Well, I'm going to answer it for you. I have to be holy. Uh, the Bible reminds us in Hebrews 12 and 14, holiness without no man shall see the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor that holiness still matters. The last characteristic is acceptable, pleasing to God. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and 5, you yourself like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house. 
to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. And so it is because of Jesus that our sacrifices to God are acceptable. That's good news, people of God, because it is through Christ Jesus' perfection and not our own. God wants us to be pleasing unto him. He wants us to bring joy and delight to his heart. And when we do what is acceptable to God, he will bless you. Because it is our reasonable service for all that he has done for us. And so if we are going to respond to the call to consecration, if we are going to respond to the change of character, how will you respond to the challenge? God's call to a non-conformed life. The first part of verse 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world. Let me ask you, where is your loyalty? Is it to the world or to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? We sometimes do not realize that we, are, we allow the world to fashion or shape us because of our mindset. And that is why we need our minds transformed so we can truly understand that we are not in the world but not of the world. Now, while we are in this world, we still have a responsibility to go out and make disciples of our nation. And what the Apostle Paul is saying in our text is we are not to be moving in the midst of evil, but untouched by it. And a lot of times it is fear what makes it much easier to conform. But all the while we forget or ignore the fact that conforming to the simple ways of the world makes one an enemy of God. And there are dangers to not separating from the world. Conforming to the things of the world can separate us from God by giving in to the lust of the flesh, by succumbing to the lust of the eye, and by yielding to the pride of life. And so these are things as we are transitioning to our better that we must watch and flee from. And so people of God and young people hear me, don't go alone to get along. I'm going to say that again, don't go alone to get along, but turn from and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And so this world, it will pressure you. Yes, it will. But the Apostle Paul says, resist that pressure. Uh, don't give in to the world because it's the least that you can do in light of all that God has done for you. And as a child of God, you may have to stand alone when you stand for righteousness. Yes, it will get lonely, but know, people of God, that when you stand for him, you are not alone. He said in his word, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I will be with you until the end of the world. And so the remedy for us not to conform is to be transformed. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it's time to transform. So if we are going to respond to the call to consecration, if we are going to respond to the change of character, and if we are going to respond to the challenge, my final point is how will you respond to the call to transformation? The text says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let's look at this word transform. The word we get transformed from in this verse is where we get the word metamorphosis. Picture the process where a caterpillar is turned into a butterfly. I wish I could spend time on the process of a caterpillar being changed into a butterfly, but I don't have time. Uh, the idea here is that you are completely changed. There is a total transformation inside and out. And so we must know that the transformation is a continual process of remembering, recalling, and redefining the will of God in our lives. And so we cannot change ourselves by our own strength or by our works. But according to our text, the transformation happens by renewing our minds. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to renew my mind. The enemy comes for our minds. Yes, he does. And this is where he comes to distract us, having us think in things that are not so. And it is very necessary in this season of our lives that we change our thinking from stinking thinking to godly thinking. I'm going to say that again. We got to change our thinking from stinking thinking to godly thinking. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And that's the reason we need to study God's word and hear it preached and taught so that when it's in us, it will manifest itself outside of us. And so renewing the mind 
is made possible by where you set your mind. And I ask you, where are you setting your mind? You got to set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things of the spirit. A mind that desires to know God's will. A mind that without doubt trusts God. Feeding our minds with the word of God. Feeding our minds with prayer. A mind to love in spite of. With our minds renewed, we can experience true transformation. And we have to put off the old man and put on the new man. We need to let the mind of the master be the master of our mind. I'm going to say that again, that we got to let the mind of the master be the master of our mind. Because he told us in his word, he said, I'll keep your mind in perfect peace. But you got to keep your mind stayed on him. And so we must adjust our way of thinking about everything in accordance with the new life that we, must, we have been given. And so God is trying to create a new you. Yes, he is. And God is calling for the new you to come forth. So go ahead and help your neighbor and tell him it's time for you to come forth. I don't think they heard you tell your neighbor that it's time for you to come forth. By having a renewed mind and living a transformed life in Christ, we are able to prove and affirm that the will of God is good, pleasing, and perfect. And so Miracle Temple, I came to let you know today that until you offer him your body, until you offer him your mind, until you offer him your will, you won't understand his good and pleasing and perfect will. We all should respond like Jesus did. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. In this season of your life, God is looking for a response out of you. God said, I'm trying to get you to my will, but I need a quick response out of you. How will you respond in your transition season? In the midst of it all, we should respond to God with his word in our mouth. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. No weapon that is formed against me, it will not, it shall not prosper. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap. If you don't give up, I come to let you know you got a hang in there. God has you on his mind. I know it's been hard, but how will you respond? People talked about you, but how will you respond? People gave up on you, but how will you respond? You felt misunderstood, but how will you respond? I came to let you know it's transition time. You got to let go of your past and look toward what's in front of you today. God's getting ready. God's getting ready to blow our minds. God's getting ready to do a new thing in Miracle Temple. Tell your neighbor, it's our time. It's our time to be blessed. It's our time to be renewed. It's our time to be delivered. It's our time for breakthrough. It's our time to be set free. Get ready. We're going higher. Get ready. We're going deeper. Get ready and be transformed. Get ready to be changed from sinners to saints, from enough to more than enough, from sickness to health, from burdens to fruitfulness, from broken to now healed, from victim to victor. Get ready, get ready. It's our time. God is bringing us through, but God wants to know how will you respond? How will you respond? How will you respond? I'm going to respond like the prophet Isaiah. He said, here I am. Send me. Yes, God. I'm going to respond like David. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. And the humble 
shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name. Yes, God, you got to stand on his word. You got to trust him. You got to lean on him. You got to depend on him. God is working it out. Yes, he is. Every prayer that you prayed, every seed that you sown, it's working out for your good. Yes, it is. It's working it out for your good. He's moving it. Yes, he is. He's moving you to a better place. He's shifting you to a better place. He's taking you to a better place. He's pushing you to a better place. It won't always be like this. But hang on. Hang on. Cast your cares upon him. Because he said he'll take care of you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, for another yes. Thank you, God, for another yes. There is a reason you have to go through. But God is able to bring you through. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. How will you respond in this season of your life? I know you don't understand it. But how will you respond in this season in your life? I tell you to give God a praise in the season that you're currently in. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord because he's still good. He's still kind. He's still merciful. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Come on, let's worship him. Lift your hands in the room. Let's worship him now. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For thou art worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. How will you respond to what the Lord is saying in this very hour? Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. God will respond. Obey the Lord, honey. Obey the Lord. But sooner or later, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna turn in your favor. It's turning. 
been around for yeah. you. Obey the Lord. You won't always be like this. Mm -hmm. God will perfect what's concerning you. But sooner or later, it's turning. around for you yeah 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 somebody's tired of being in the same cycle mm -hmm. somebody's tired of being in the same cycle the altar is open if you're tired come to the altar because God wants to break that cycle today but he all he just wants to know how will you respond in this season the altar is open to you Come on. Turn in my Turn. 